In 2004, Race Relations Commissioner Joris de Bress was outraged, as were many of us, at an act of destruction in Wellington's Macra Cemetery. It happened in the Jewish section of the cemetery and saw 100 graves vandalised and a prayer house burned down. That sent shockwaves through uh, the Wellington community, the national and the international community, and there was an immediate reaction. The vandalising of the graves made news all around the world, and here in New Zealand, people from across the ethnic and political spectrums started talking about how to stop such ignorance and hatred taking root in this country. Muslim, Christian, Pacific, Māori, Pākehā, Asian uh, community representatives uh, making a statement of solidarity with uh, uh, the Jewish people of New Zealand, uh, sending a petition to Parliament. The result, not just a unanimous condemnation of racism by MPs, but also the birth of a brand new initiative. The New Zealand Diversity Action Programme, a determined plan facilitated by the Human Rights Commission to build tolerance and understanding in this country. OK, mingle, 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 mingle. It's an idea that's gaining great momentum, with over 250 organisations registering their activities. You have to set out to be a beacon of light in a troubled world. Here's a taste of what's happening. At Outward Bound, a place renowned for bringing out the best in youth, young Aucklanders from a variety of countries and cultures are forming some unique bonds. This is what they call the Southern Cross course, where young adults from Somalia to China, Muslims and Christians, Baha'i and Hindu, are taking huge steps in not just physical activity, but also cultural and ethnic awareness. The face of New Zealand is really changing, and Outward Bound is very keen that we are part of the changing face of New Zealand, that we give those people the opportunity, because we feel like we've got something to contribute and um, both for those people and for New Zealand as a whole. They've begun the process of changing the face of Outward Bound, of making sure that it is actually reaching out into and serving the diverse communities of New Zealand. Everybody's different here, that we've got different back backgrounds, different ways of doing stuff, but when you have to work in a team, you learn to suppress that and go past it. Well, the first day I got to know them, I thought, these guys, going to be friends forever. The Southern Cross course has a key event which showcases ethnic diversity in a powerful way, through food. This is um, cooking Fiji style. Just the base for uh, fried chicken. Um, these are the dumplings, um, also known as date boys. Alluring smells, ancient recipes and the joy of discovering new tastes are great ingredients for building bridges. Looking good, yeah. As each of these people said, I am a Kiwi in their own language and in their own way, they were aware that in just a few days some great strides in understanding took place. They're obviously having a great time, they found it pretty challenging, uh, but, um, but I think each of the groups that's come through here has uh, developed a kind of team spirit uh, and you just see them uh, getting along really well together. Uh, it makes you wonder why we don't all do that all the time. The 21st century seems to me to be the century we're going to have to tackle discrimination along religious lines. That was how visiting speaker Maureen Sears framed the challenge at another important diversity strand, an interfaith forum in Auckland. And that is much, much, much more challenging than gender or race because inherently it's about thinking. It's no small challenge building bridges across religious chasms that often divide whole nations. But organisers say New Zealand is a great place to start the dialogue. It's a great feast of um, spiritual connections and enrichment, reaching out to one another, learning about our, each other's faiths in a spirit of respect. There's no more potent and international melting pot than sport. And the potential of the soccer pitch as a place to bring different ethnicities together is being harnessed in a very effective way in another strand of the Diversity Action Programme.
to me, and this really opens the doors. It's all about um, allowing them to integrate into the local community. This multi-ethnic soccer cup tournament is now a key part of the Auckland International Cultural Festival. It's proving to be hugely popular for especially newer migrants seeking a way to become more involved in their communities. In the last two, three years, which uh, Auckland City organized the soccer tournaments also into the cultural festival, it's made a huge difference. Lots of teams, you see today, 39 soccer teams registered here. It's a brilliant. Hey, yes. <laughs> you you <what>? Somalia. <laughs> From Cambodia. Oh. <laughs> so diversity is now being effectively promoted at these festivals, not just on the dance floor, but also on the field of play. And from the matchup of teams from all around the planet is coming a newfound camaraderie in a physical language that often needs no words to explain. It's a part of human rights. They are living in New Zealand. They need to be integrated. They need to be involved in all the activities within the wider community. A little further south, the Waikato Museum in Hamilton is hosting a very special day, on which a wide variety of ethnic groups are getting an opportunity to tell their unique stories. It's a day where people can share some of their experiences, they can share some of their skills, their creativity, and it's a, a really good opportunity to, to get different parts of our community to, get, to engage with one another. Some of the learnings are based around the rich cultures that now proliferate in New Zealand, their distinctive hallmarks, customs and foods. We've been introducing over the last two or three years a series of different exhibitions and events and community programs and we, we realise how well it, it is aligned to the Diversity Action Programme. While others are able to educate their fellow Kiwis about their struggles, their homelands and their journeys to becoming New Zealanders. I think it gives the Hamilton community a real sense of how diverse the people in Hamilton are and it also brings alive, I think, some of the realities of people's lives. I think it's awesome, yeah, really enjoying it. Lots of things that I hadn't seen before and didn't know about. This is a great example of a traditional organisation thinking outside the square and promoting diversity. It's a meeting point for the community. Uh, I, I strongly believe that museums can be agents of social change. At the sharp end of New Zealand's challenge to become a more tolerant society is a programme in Christchurch to help foreign students feel safer. People were like swearing at me on the street and throwing eggs at me and just from the cars. In recent years, Christchurch has been a tough place for some students from other cultures to fit in. Instances of abuse were far too prevalent to be ignored. We do realise that the harassment does happen. It does occur. So what to do? A group of Christchurch Diversity Action participants decided to meet and see if something could be done. We have an understanding of roughly how often this is happening in our streets. I would very much like to achieve a decrease in that. The first step towards a solution? A website where students who've been harassed can go online and report instances of abuse, anonymously if they wish. Harassment is quite a personal issue and dealing it with a website like a computer is so much easier because you don't have to talk to someone and, and experience emotions like with that person, so it's not as intimate. The way the report it works is that there are key questions that are obviously asked and we're drawing out that information so we get a more complete picture where someone verbalises that sometimes they miss out some important facts for us. Participants in the Diversity Action Programme are realistic about programmes like this. They know things don't change overnight, but they're confident Kiwis are waking up to the fact that to understand each other is to build a better New Zealand. United we stand, divided we fall. Do you want to do something to support cultural diversity in New Zealand? Go to www.hrc.co.nz and sign up online. Email us at diversity at hrc.co.nz or free phone 0800 496 877.